I want to speak to you about the Father's blessing. And the blessing of God is going to erupt in this place tonight. How many of you are ready for blessings? So the blessing of God is going to be activated. And it's going to be demonstrated in your life. Just like we've done miracles tonight. So the blessing of God is going to be activated. Just like you saw people healed. You're going to see blessings come. And you have to understand how it works. How, do we gonna, how are we going to move into the movement of God if we don't have the blessing of God upon this movement? And so I want to speak to you, like I said, about the Father's blessing. You cannot live without the blessing. Write that down. You cannot live without the blessing. And number two is the blessing is a sign that God is with you. Say this with me. The blessing of the Lord, the of the Lord. is a sign that God is with me. Now, you cannot live without the blessing of God. It's impossible. You have to have the blessing of God upon your life. People in the world, people here, we, you can prosper two ways. You can prosper through the curse. And I know you thought that I hear, right? Yes. You can prosper through the curse or you can prosper through the blessing. The curse... When the curse is in operation and you prosper in the curse, this is what will happen. You will have financial success. You will have some blessings. But your relationship with your children will, be made, will probably be in, 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 a, in, in, in a mess. Your family, family will be in dysfunctional family. There will be sickness operating in your life. You will be empty. Have all the success, but at the end of your life... You will have nothing. Prosper under the curse. Then you have the prosperity of the blessing. We as the children of God, we as the families of God, we operate under the blessings of God. So we don't operate under the curse, we operate under the blessing. When you operate under the blessing, your family is blessed. Children is blessed. Your home is blessed. Your business is blessed. Everything you do is placed. In the Old Testament, people had battles. They fought over the blessings. Demons fight over territory. People fight over the blessings. How does it work? You have to seek it. You have to fight for it. And because the blessing of the Lord empowers you. Everything God does, He does as he does as follows. You need to write this down. Everything God does, He does with patterns, principles, and then it gets carried out or executed or manifested in cycles. So everything God does, He does it in patterns, principles, and then it manifests in cycles. Some people have cycles upon their life, cycles of blessings. Let's speak a little bit about it. How do you know that I'm in the blessing of God? Is because some people will say, man, I'm in a season where everything just goes well. You know, things just happen. Open doors, contracts, miracles. Actually, what they are saying is they are in a cycle of blessings. So what happens is they do the pattern, the principle, and then the cycle gets kicked in. That means the cycle is continuous. We can live under the cycle of an open heaven. Don't think I've signed one contract. Now I am I'm happy. Praise God. The year is good. No, no, no. There's more. Because there is a cycle that you can create. Create a momentum that you can create for your life. Now all the blessings of God works in cycles. How do I activate the blessing of God? Here is the thing. You activate the blessing of God through the one word called obedience. Say obedience. Now what is the blessing? The blessing of the Lord is the authorization to be supernaturally empowered to be blessed. To be successful. I'm going to say it again. What is the blessing? When you are blessed, it means the following. I am now supernaturally enabled. To enter into a cycle of blessings. And that's what's going to happen tonight. 
you're going to be activated to enter into a cycle. Not a failure of defeat, of then it's up, then it's down, then my business is there. Then it, no, no, you're going to have a cycle of the blessings of God, whereby you enter in through the blessing, the empowerment or the supernatural empowerment to be successful. Genesis chapter 39 and verse number 2, we see Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. It's not what you have that makes you successful. It is who you have that makes you successful. Here in this chapter, Joseph is a slave. He stands in the city court naked. Nobody's around him. No family's been sold as a slave. And he's standing there and they're putting bets upon him. They're buying Joseph naked in the middle of the street. Look what the Lord says. He is a successful man. In the natural, that doesn't look successful. But in God's eyes, that is what a successful man looks like. Look at this. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now, what is the purpose of the blessing? I want you to stay with me tonight. because it's very important of where we're going in the movement. What is the purpose of the blessing of God? Write the following down. The purpose of the blessing is to be, number one, successful through supernatural means to excel. So what is it to be successful? It's to be supernaturally empowered to excel in my life. That's when the blessing comes, you excel. Go further. Anything that does not prosper, let me help you here. If your business does not prosper, like I said, you have to hang in here tonight. I'm preaching from an apostolic thrust. If your business is not prospering or successful or your ministry, your family, you can go through the list. Then that means those things are not blessed. Okay. Okay. So you have to understand how the blessing works. So I'm saying this is the most important message you'll hear. Because we are praying, Lord, I bind the devil, I bind the devil, I bind the devil. And God says, you need to have the blessing upon it. You can bind as my, he's already bound, but you need to have the blessing. The pronounced blessing of the Father needs to come upon your business. Upon your family. Now, I want, I don't know, I don't want to be very legalistic about this but you know sometimes we just oh, i just want to get married let me just go to the court and they get married in the court and if you are married in the court praise god bless you i bless you tonight but please don't do it if you are a child of god come to the house of god let's bless you properly lay hands upon your marriage do it right man because that guy working there in that office he doesn't have the power to bless you. So it works through obedience. Number two, the blessing of God upon my life is the blessing for other people. So what is the purpose of the blessing? Is to be successful through supernatural empowerment. And number two is to be a blessing for other people. In Genesis chapter 12, in verse number two, says this, I will make you a great nation, a mega nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Pause there. Now that's a whole message that I'm still going to preach to you one Sunday night. But here's what you need to understand. You cannot have people coming and buying from your company if your name is not great. People are not going to come to NBCFC if NBCFC is not a great name. Is that right? God says, I'm going to make your company's name great so that people can come to you i will bless you i will make you a great nation and you look at this what is the purpose of the blessing you shall be a blessing shall be a blessing now i'm not talking just about finances i'm talking about i'm a blessing tonight here because i carry the anointing upon my life humbly to pray for sick people And to shift atmospheres. And to carry a movement. You are blessed because of the blessing that I carry. So I just wanted to say that so that you don't just think money here. This is not an offering message. 
I am preaching to you about the blessing of the Father. Because this thing has been activated in my life. And since it's been activated in my life, many years ago, I see the blessing of God. I see how people are blessed because of the blessing that I carry. I thank God that this year we've already had so many people that are healed and so many miracles that have taken place and so many people that are saved. I thank God that I can be a blessing to those people. I did not give them money. Money I don't have. Silver and gold I do not have. But what I have will become a blessing to you. So it doesn't mean when the blessing is upon you, it doesn't mean that you don't face problems. It doesn't mean that you will not have challenges. It doesn't mean that you will not face mountains in your life. It just means that the hand of God will now be upon you. And when the hand of God is upon you, you will start seeing God's presence move in your life, in your family, in your finances, and if, in your business. If you are a giver, you will have more than other people. Many people came to NBCFC and received revelation. They sat here, and I'm speaking to pastors here. I'm, we, we're on the same side here. People go to your church, receive miracles, receive revelation. Those revelation takes them and, and put them into a dimension where they now prosper. Now when they start prospering, what happens? You don't see them in church, or they don't give, and all these things start happening, and then they leave. And guess what happens? We get hurt, we get offended, and we say, I'm not going to do this anymore. I have done much good to a lot of people, and left the church. And I, I, every time when they leave, I say, I'm not going to do that ever again. I'm not going to buy them anything. I'm not going to bless my sons. I'm not going to do anything. They can do whatever they want. I get hurt the whole time. No. Oh, that, oh, sorry. But you know what the Bible says this? St don't stop doing good. Don't grow weary in doing good. So I want to say tonight to all the pastors, don't stop doing good. Keep on blessing your people. Keep on giving the best revelations to your people. Preach every Sunday, man. Empty yourself out. If they leave, they leave with the, with the glory of God. At least they've learned something. And so many people have become prosperous in the church. And then they leave and then they, you feel abused. But that's what the blessing is all about. Is that I'm a blessing to others. The third thing about the blessing is this. The blessing will protect you, will provide for you, and will uh, uh, bring you to a place where you are. Uh, what's the right word? I'm looking for the right word. When you preserve something. The blessing will preserve you, protect you, and will bring provision to you. Say this with me. The blessing of the Lord, the of the Lord brings, protection. brings protection. It provides and it brings me to a place where I'm preserved for the work of God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse number 22 says the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. Uh, not your boss, right? Not the economy. Not the color of your skin. Not BBE. Not white, black, colored. In no, no. The blessing of the Lord. That is what makes rich. That means you can live in a shack. You can live in the poorest of the poorest area. If the blessing of the Lord is upon you, that poor spirit will not keep you there. You will rise up out of that circumstances. Shout the blessing of the Lord. So when the blessing of the Lord is upon you, you won't have stress. Let me explain to you how this works. When the blessing is upon your life, God will tell you, I want you to build that building. And you will build the building without having a heart attack. <laughs> when God said, build this building with a hundred people, no money, I could have stressed out. 
I could have gone on, 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 on tablets. I could have ended up in a mental institution. I could have ended up as an alcoholic on drugs, whatever. But when you are under the blessing of the Lord, there's no stress. Everything you do is calm. It's wonderful. So this is what I want to tell you. If you want to build a business, build it. I need to start the, start the business. Why? Because there, there's no stress under the blessing of God. You're going to pay off your debt in the name of Jesus without any stress. You're going to live a healthy life, wealthy life without any stress. I, I just want to pause you. I rebuke stress over this place tonight. Over every single person in this house. You've been stressing long enough, worrying long enough, suffering long enough. No more stress in the name of Jesus. I speak the blessing over your life that you will not have stress anymore. Say, I receive it. So, How do I live in the continuous blessing of God? I live in it through obedience. Every act, listen, every act of obedience pushes me into the cycle of blessing. I'm going to say that one more time. Every time I obey, every act of obedience pushes me into the cycle of blessing. God says pray, I pray. If God says give, I give. Every act of obedience, He will bless. He blesses the act of obedience. Now, it's very interesting how this works because people come and they receive the blessing and they never give back. Oh, hang in there, love me. But you need to hear tonight. The Father expects us to live in the blessings of God. And what He blesses, we must bless. Don't, you can write this down, tweet it. Listen to what I'm saying because now I'm going to get a lot of emails. But here it is. Don't bless thieves. I cannot bless what God doesn't bless. Stop blessing people that are liars, thieves, rebellious people. I had a lot of people going on. Why didn't you bless those people when they leave? I'm not blessing rebellious people. Go by yourself. Go, you and your. I am not blessing rebellious people. If they were not standing on this platform, I anointed them. Bless them. You stretch out your hands towards them. And we said, now we bless you to go into another ministry, into another church, whatever. Then that means if you don't see them, the blessing is not upon them. I have given my consent. Go. You're not going to contaminate this church. But you're not. I will not bless rebellious people. But pastor, you know, oh, they're so precious. And, and I, I hear how my people speak. That's why I speak about this. Oh, they're so precious. I bless you. You can go. I bless you. You know what you're doing? You bless a thief. You bless a rebellious person. God doesn't bless rebellion. God doesn't bless thieves. God doesn't bless liars. I am not doing that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you do what? Amen. Obedience. If God tells you to build a church, you build that church. God says buy a property, you buy the property. If God says do that, sir, you do that. How? Don't ask house. You just do what God is telling you to do. When God said to me, fill Carnival City, I said, God, I'm not sure how we're going to do it. I don't know. But I just acted in obedience, rented the stadium, rented the sound, paid the stuff. I'm telling you, you have to act in obedience. And the Lord said, build this building. I said, God, we're in Freeway Park. We're not on a highway. Nobody sees us there. We're in the backside of Boxburg. 100 people, this block, that block, that's all we had. 
Listen, if I did not act in obedience, not one of you in the gallery, not one of you from there, thrown all the way here, would not have been here tonight. And if I just wanted to preach for my culture, Exa Wittmann, mit Afrikaans, you know, Swags no more If I was confound to my culture and my skin and my tradition, we would have not reached English people, Kosa people, Sutu people, Indian people. Come on! Yay! Say, I'm taking off the limits tonight. So what is it? It's act of obedience. Shake the leg. Obedience has three levels. Listen. Write down. Obedience has three levels. Obedience will be tested. Your obedience will be tested, number one, to see if it's, or rather rephrase, to see when it's not profitable for you. So, here God says, I want you, to go and give away that to somebody. But you're not going to get anything out of that. I want to see if you can still be obedient if you're not getting any profits from that. Let me see if you can still give your tithes and I'm not going to give you nothing back this month. Let me test your obedience. <sighs> obedience will be tested on the profit levels. Then, number two, your obedience will be tested to see if it's, if it's not comfortable for you. In other words, if it's comfortable, then really your obedience is not being tested. Some of you are sitting here tonight, you, you don't normally don't come maybe on a Sunday night, or maybe you drove far to get to here. Listen, that was uncomfortable. Pastor JJ, he had to leave his church today. To get on a plane this morning, to arrive this afternoon, to sit in the service and fly back tomorrow morning. That's not comfortable. He's not preaching. He's not getting money. He's not doing that. He's coming here out of a comfort zone, leaving his children to be here. God test the obedience. Is it comfortable to drive to NBCFC from Kempton Park every uh, Sunday? It's not. Because you have to get up early to get your children dressed, be here at 7 o'clock in the morning. That's not comfortable. But because of obedience, God placed me at NBCFC. Therefore, if He placed me here, I will drive an hour, I will drive two hours. But if God placed me there, I'm going to be there. It's not convenient, it's not comfortable, but I am obedient. Ooh. I'm getting closer to, to the thing here. How many of you drove tonight outside of Johannesburg? How many of you live outside of East, the East Rand? Raise your hand. Okay. Was it comfortable to drive here? It's convenient? No. But you did it. Out of the act of obedience. All of you raise your hands. You will have a blessing of God. Those people that are, are driving outside of the East Rand, lift your hands, lift your hands. Father, I pronounce the blessing of God upon them in the name of Jesus. What they sowed today in driving far, what it, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Woo. My God, if it's not comfortable to travel or comfortable to do things, maybe I need to ask myself the question, is it an act of obedience? Let me tell you something, it's not, for, it's not comfortable for me to fly every time, leave my home, get on an airplane. I said to mom when we were traveling, I said, do you realize that this is our second home? <laughs> Airports, sick people coughing all over you, eating plain food. Every week I have to eat plain food. When I'm in America, I say... If I can just have a braai. If it can pop in sauce, in flesh. It's all I wanted. I was sitting with a South African pastor. There. Well, he's from Botswana, Pastor Simon. I said to him, he says, I can't eat this food. I said, I'm, uh, me too. I said to him, aren't you also less for a braai? I said, Pastor. <laughs> 
It's not comfortable. Living in hotels. Sleeping on other people's cushions. Cease. You know how dirty those cushions are. I, I'm, I'm going to travel with my own cushions from now. Because I don't know who slept before me in that room. And all the well and all the stuff coming out there in that cushion. I have to sleep there. I have to eat from their cutlery. I have to sit on an airplane where everybody is sick. And there's no fresh air for 20 hours on a plane. Sitting in a seat. Listen, let me tell you something. It's not easy for me and comfortable for me to leave my wife, to leave my children, to leave you, to leave the church. To go for two days, being jet lagged all out in your mind. Receive the word of God. Come back. Stand on a Sunday night and say, now I'm going to be a blessing to you. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Because of an act of obedience, I'll do it. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to obey the Lord. So never limit God. Be in fellowship with Him. Be open to connect to people. I want you to hear me tonight. In this movement, you need to get this key, this principle. Be open to connect to one another. I love what's happening here the past couple of weeks from the beginning of January on Sunday night. What happens? There are people from other churches coming. People from other religions, and traditions and whatever. But we all come together to connect for one purpose. And that's to see the glory, the supernatural power of God in our lives. And I want to say this. Connect. That guy next to you. Might be the guy that's going to bless you with the next million rand. Uh -uh. Maybe ask that person behind you. Ask him, is, is dad speaking about you? Is the apostle speaking about you? Are you the one that's going to give me the million? You never know who you sit next to. Hallelujah. I say mega blessings is coming. Mega blessings are coming to those who are a blessing. And I know most of you are givers. I know most of you. You are givers. You love coming to the house of God. You've put energy in there. Can I pronounce over you tonight? Mega blessings. Woo! Let us stop taking the blessing so lightly. Business people, listen. The king never went to war. The king never went to war without the priest blessing him first going to war. Old Testament. Contracts, and I want to speak to my business people, everyone here tonight. Contracts will never be blessed and never be prosperous if the blessing is not resting upon those deeds. Let it sink in. Because we lose contracts, lose businesses, because we are not, or we have not, the blessing of God upon them. The Father's blessing. The church will not be built. A building will not come to you, son. Property will not come to you. Buildings will not come to you if there is not the Father's blessing upon that. That's why there are many ministries today doing their own thing. Not owning a property. They are in school halls, school classrooms, because they have not a father in their lives that blesses them. Success in everything you do will depend on the blessing of the Father, our Heavenly Father. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3 says this. Blessed be the God of our Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. Who has blessed us? Who blessed us? The Father. With every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. Say this with me. The blessing comes from the Father. 
It doesn't say the blessing comes from your skin color, from your race, from because you are a man or a female or whatever. The blessing of God comes, here it is, right down. The blessing of God comes to sons. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 3. Blessed be, our, be the God and our Father of our Lord, Son, Jesus, who blessed us. God uses people in authority to bless family. And I want to go into a direction where I want to take you for tonight. In the next couple of minutes, the glory of God's going to fall. The blessing of God's going to be activated in your life. I want you to hear this. Everyone can bless people. But not all of us has the authority to impart the blessing. All of us can bless, but not all of us has the authority to impart the blessing. In the Old Testament, the priest and the king was used to bless. I want to ask you this question. Have you read in your New Testament, Matthew, from Matthew up to Revelation, you don't see kings anymore. You see kings in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, kings are now apostles. That's how it works. Old Testament kings are the highest authority. In the New Testament, the apostles are the kings. In the fivefold. Watch out. What you curse. Watch out who you curse. Because that curse comes back to you. And the apostle has the most power he's not bigger than anybody he's just got the authority more authority to place than others in hebrews chapter 7 verse number 7 now beyond all contradiction the lesser is placed by the greater or that says better but actually greater the lesser is now blessed because of the greater now listen I am very proud of all of you. All my sons. I'm proud of you. You are great men. That's why I've sent you a text today to say sit here with me. I am proud of you. I'm proud of you, Tish. Proud of you, son. I'm proud of you, JJ. I'm proud of you. I am proud of my sons. Pastor C, I'm proud of you. I am so proud of you. You've become such a great man of God. You've, you've grown so much in the faith, man. I'm proud of you. Very proud of you. I'm proud of my son, Nikki, and proud of Michal. Proud of you, Pastor. I'm proud of each one of you. Pastor Ivan, Pastor Pastor Neil, Pastor David. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Dan. I'm proud of you, man. But you need to get this. The greater bliss. The lesser, not that you are here, it's in authority. That's how this thing works. So the apostle has the blessing, can pronounce the blessing. In authority, in the church, the pastor has the authority to bless and pronounce the blessing upon his children. In the home, the husband is the head. In the business, the CEO is the, the bigger one. That can pronounce the blessing over the lesser. I don't have to come to your business and pronounce the blessing over everybody. If you are the CEO of your company, you are in authority over that. But in the church, here, yeah, for you to operate in the blessing of God outside, you need to understand that the apostle needs to release the blessing with the prophetic anointing with that. I'm not greater than you. But I am greater in authority. So let me help you here. In church. I hope this. I'm speaking to you as leaders. We'll be done in about 10 minutes. Look at me here. Just look at me. Because people miss the blessings of God. They don't take the blessing seriously. They think I can just pack my bags and go. And I'm just going to be like always. No, no, no. 
There is a level. So, how this is how it works. Let's use Pastor, Pastor Tasha and Pastor Neil here, or Teacher Tasha. She comes and she blesses you on a Sunday. I bless you. And she pronounced a blessing over you. That's all good. And that is a blessing. But the moment I step into that office, or the moment I step into that meeting, the authority change. Then my authority overrides as the apostle, the teacher's anointing. And then when I bless, it's greater than that one in authority levels. Don't resist me. Just flow. You cannot have your tea girl bless your company if you are the CEO. She can do a cell on a Wednesday morning in your company and bless the workers. It's fine until you walk in. Then the things change. Authority structure change. Because the lesser is blessed by the greater. And there are two kinds of favor. Write this down. Two kinds of favor. Direct favor and extended favor. Say that with me. Direct favor. favor. Say extended favor. favor. One more time. Never forget that. Because many people live off the favor that you carry. Get you. Some people live off the favor that you carry or I carry. And they have favor when they're in the house. And it goes well. Now I'm going to do my own thing. And it's because they didn't understand that was extended favor. Now they go, they can't buy properties, business falls, marriage falls, stuff falls because they did not realize it's the extended favor. Stay with me. Many people are reaping blessings, doing business, signing deals, making a lot of money based upon my extended favor. (laughs) I feel it. Maybe I should have just preached this for leaders on another day. Who do you think you are? I told you I'm preaching as an apostle tonight. I'm not your pastor. Because we have a lot of people here. So you need to understand. I'm coming from that dimension. You have to understand how this thing works. Because Christians walk around with no money, no blessings, no power, no anointing, no glory. Because they reject fatherhood. They reject sonship. And they want to do their own little thing. Let me tell you something. That doesn't work. You have to get to the place where you say, I need the Father to bless me. I have prophesied to people in this place. From nothing they started growing and became influential. Then they leave and they think, now they're on their own. Eh, extended favor. Business people do business on extended favor. But they never honor. Never give one cent. Never bless. They never honor you. I have prayed for people and they became prosperous. Signed millions. Live in homes of millions of rand. And then when I see them, how are you doing? Uh, No, it's going well. Were you bringing, you know, are you sowing into the movement? No, I'm sowing for that guy in this television guy. And I'm in that church in the mornings and at night I'll come and visit you. And <laughs> let me tell you, no more. No more. No more extended grace. You have to understand how this thing operates in the dimension of God. Don't invest into people who, whose vision, or let me rather say this, don't invest into people, into their vision, that doesn't invest into your vision. They are scandals, man. So into other people. 
used to come and, Pastor, please pray for my, this is my priestly offering. I want to bless you. Thank you. Bless you. They prosper. And then I walk away and I say, I'm not going to do that anymore. Now you're filling on your own envelope. I'm going to bless you still because I still get those names. But I need you to grow up. In the spirit. Understand. Oh, no, my pastor. But don't need for me. No, no, no. Now they withhold it. They're withholding honor. They sit in church, not getting nothing from you. You preach your lungs out. They don't get nothing because the honor has stopped. I'm not preaching at somebody. I'm preaching at everybody. People are living off the extended favor. But I'm telling you tonight, you need to understand, it's not going to happen anymore. And I'm not speaking from me, but businessmen, listen to me. Some people left your company and they're still doing business based upon your name, based upon what you taught them, based upon your favor. It cannot operate like that. The blessing is supernatural. And we have to understand how this works. John chapter 13 Verse number three. And I want you to hear, see that there's two words that I want you to see. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things. Say all things. All. It actually means mega blessings. All. Jesus, the Son of God, knowing that the Father had given him all things. Who gave him? The Father gave the Son mega blessing. Mega. Powerful stuff. And then he says there, into his hands that he had come from and God was and was and was going to God. There's three things you need, or two things you need to see there. Jesus knew his purpose and he knew his destiny. He knew where he came from and he knew where he was going. He knew he was a son. <laughs> That's what he knew. I'm a son. I know where I come from. I know where I'm going. Because I have unlimited mega blessings from my father. Write this down. Only sons have access to unlimited resources. Because they know where the origin of the blessing comes from. This is going to bless you so much. Jesus, look at this. If you go and read John, John chapter 13 tonight. I love this portion of scripture. The Bible says, verse number 3. Stay with me. Don't get tired on me. Here, I know I was a bit hard. But I'm okay now. Listen. Just receive. Keep on receiving. Jesus knows where he comes from as the son. Know where he's going. God has given him what? All things. Mega blessings. He could have walked away right there and said, Hallelujah. I've got all things. I am a blessing. I have the anointing. I have the power. God has given me all things. What did he do? He said, I'm going to take off the towel. Take off the garment and I'm going to wash the feet of the people because I have to stay a servant. He had all things, but servanthood kept him to operate in the supernatural power of God. Servanthood. Servants. Or not servants. Servanthood. The spirit of sonship. Is to receive everything from God. When people don't serve in the house, they disqualify themselves from the inheritance as a son. The anointing upon your life is to serve people. I serve you with my gift. I serve you with my blessing. I serve you. My team here serves you. The sound man serves you. The camera people serves you. Everyone that's cleaning the church serves you. 
Businessmen, they serve the church through their finances. Widows serve the church through giving 10 rand and 5 rand. They serve. Never lose your ability to serve. Because the mega blessing will rest upon your life when you serve. Now, I, I want to say something that Apostle Maldonado said. And it was a bit difficult for me to receive at first. And I'm still trying to process it. But I need to give you what I heard. He said this. He says, he needed healing in his body. He was suffering from sickness. And he said, God, I'm praying for everybody. When everybody gets healed. And, and <laughs> I'm struggling. Uh, I know of, of the stuff and so on. But he says, God, why don't you heal me? I pray for myself. I fast and I pray. and I lay my hands on myself. But I'm not getting healed. And everybody else is getting healed. And the Lord said to him this. He says, because the anointing upon your life is not for you. It's for others. You need to act just like them in faith for someone to pray for. When he said that, that all lights went on. Ding, 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 ding. Because I pray for people and, and I'm struggling. Because the anointing is not for me. It's for you. I have to get somebody to pray for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you excited in this house tonight? Anything Jesus was given, was given to him to serve. Never lose your spirit of servanthood. Tell the person next to you, don't lose your spirit of servanthood. I, I want to speak to my precious family here tonight. Listen, don't ever think you are too big not to serve. I hope you don't mind, Tony. I want to say something about you. One of the great businessmen in the church. But every Sunday when I see him, I see him in the weekend. Always has the nicest suits. Looks good. But on a Sunday when he walks in here and I see the t-shirt. Relax, I've got it. I've said to Nikki, Nikki, please, just get Tony to wear. I feel bad. So I promise you, but as time went by, the Holy Spirit said to him, no, it's a good place. It's a good place. Never become too big that you cannot serve. Never sit in a class that you think, I can't receive from this guy. I'm the pastor of MCFC. I'm a teacher. I'm an evangelist. I'm the cell leader. Who's this guy that's going to teach me? You, you are you're heading for pride. Never be too big. You cannot be too big not to serve. Love the people. Cry with the people. Help the people. Build the people. Don't always try to be hard on them. Love the people. Love your people. You know what rebellious people say? They say the following. I serve God, not people. My calling. But what they don't know is that God could next. Through people. And the anointing flows through people. And the presence flows through people. The power flows through people. The devil stopped serving in the heaven. And when he stopped serving in heaven, he lost it. And the moment he stopped serving was the moment he lost the inheritance. And I want to say this tonight. Listen carefully, I'm done. You... Don't earn sonship. It is your DNA. Serve and you will get the inheritance. In 2 Kings chapter 13, verse number 14 and 18, up to 18. Elijah became sick with an illness of which he would die. Then Joaz the king, Israel came down. To him and wept over his face and said, Oh my father, oh my father. 
Hello? He didn't say my king. He said my father. My father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. And Elijah said to him, take a bow and arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. And so he put his hand on it. And Elijah put his hands on the king's hands. Look at this. Put his hands on the king's hands. Nikki, come here. Or oh, Michal, come here. You here. Or oh, Nikki, come. Both my sons are here. Look at this. He says, put your hand out there. He says, all right, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take the city. We're going to have to do it together. My hand and your hand. New Testament, that was the prophet, uh, that was the prophet and, the, and the king. New Testament, what is it? Prophet and the apostle. You know what's going to happen in five minutes from now? The prophet and the apostle is going to lay hands on you. I told you when I laid hands on you, don't forget what I'm doing. Because you cannot do it without the hands of the prophet and the apostle. To get the blessing. And so they put their hands together and they pulled the bow, bow back and the arrow and they got the victory. Thanks, son. Now, I want to close with this to say to you, you must speak the blessing or the blessing is spoken. Yet look at this. I speak the blessing. I'm going to speak the blessing now. And then the hands seals the blessing. So I'm going to bless you. After that, we're going to lay hands on you. And what happens? The blessing is sealed. There are things in your life that you'll never, that you'll never see, that will never be released until another hand comes upon you. I need you. You need me. We need one another. We need the blessing of the prophet and the apostle upon our lives. Now, what, what are we going to pray for tonight? We're going to trust God. This is what's going to happen. That the wisdom is going to come. Now listen, this is the main thing. You need to write down. What is the wisdoms of God? The wisdoms of God is the, listen, the how-tos of God. And the gift of the apostle, the office of the apostle, has the power to release that. I've taken this church, not me, Holy Ghost. We've taken the church from 100, or we started with 50, 30 people. We've grown the church, exponential growth the past couple of years to thousands of people. Why? Because of the word of the prophet and the apostle. We put our hands together and we do it. We have the wisdoms on how to do it. Don't try to make a new wheel when we've already done that. Sons, don't try to build a church out of your own. We've done it. Learn from it. Do what, we've do, what we do. When I tell you, hey, you're out of line, don't, yeah, what's your problem? This is my job. This is what I do. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm, an ex I'm a specialist, just like a doctor. I check you out when you're out of line. Wisdom is the how-tos of God. So we're going to impart wisdom to you. What is wisdom? It's the how-tos of God. So what's going to happen when you leave this place tonight? All of a sudden, you're going to know how to sign the deal. How to build your company from 10 million to 20 million. How to grow your church from 100 to 3,000. How to take your ministry from nowhere and take it to a place called somewhere. You're going to have, you're going to be, maybe you're unemployed, but you're going to get promotion. Why? Because of the how-tos of God. Say how-tos of God. Whew, I love it. I feel the presence of God coming here. The how-tos of God. How do I do this? How do I build this church? How do I build my marriage? How do I build my children? How do I build this thing? The how-tos of God is the wisdoms of God. And the wisdom of God is only transferred through the laying of hands. Spirit of the Lord came upon Joshua, the son of Moses. 
And when he was anointed, he said, the Bible says, and he was full of the wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I will release upon you tonight the how-tos of God. And Jacob fought an angel to get the blessing. And I want, to, I want to, you to hear me tonight. The hear with my help. Jacob wrestled with God to get the blessing. And here I'm going to break something in the spirit in, in a minute from now. Jacob didn't go to the angel and say, I'm, I'm so sorry to bother you, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm very I'm sorry. I know you're very busy. I'm sorry. I just want to get a blessing. When you have time, would you just, you know, just bless me and, and, and just, you know, release the blessing of God upon my life. I know you're busy. I don't want to bother you. I'm your father. I'm your dad. Through the church here. Speaking to my sons here tonight. Pastors, you go and preach at your church. But I'm your dad. Everything I have is yours. The anointing I carry is yours. The power I carry is yours. The building, everything is yours. You have to stop thinking like a servant. Sons never bother a father. I'm sorry to bother you, Dad. You're so busy, Dad. I'm so sorry that I... Listen, I rebuke that spirit of rejection over your life. That's a spirit of rejection. It's a spirit of slavery. It's a spirit of a slave, man. You are no longer a slave. I speak to you. Rise up, sons. You sign deals that are not blessed. Your businesses are going down. Things are going down because you, I don't want to bother. I don't want to phone. I'm too scared because this. Listen, you have to wrestle that blessing. Fight that blessing. Get the blessing, man. I'm your dad. My children never bothers me. Get away from the servant mentality. It's a religious spirit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you look so religious. You're so oh holy. No man. Servant mentality. All the sons I've ever had in my life all had the same excuse. I don't want to bother you. You're so busy. You are so, you know, you know, you know, eh, eh, religious servant. Oh, Yanni Yammer. Hey, I am your dad, man. My children, my daughters, my sons, you never bother your father. Get away from servant mentality. Get the blessing. Before you sign the deal, phone me, text me. Before I got on this platform, I asked my father, bless me before I preach. Pastor Frank was in this church. He preached that message. He said, I will never get on a platform if my father don't bless me. From that message, I only had two people in this church that, that does that. My son does it every Sunday, Friday. He will not take this platform if he doesn't hear his dad's voice. I text him, Nikki, I bless you. Or I write him a message. I bless you, son. Preach under the glory of God. Since he's been doing that, miracles are happening. Church is growing. Youth is growing. And I want to speak to my Ephesians. You better text me before you teach, man. Before you get on this platform, I want to see you reach out. Dad, please bless me. Pray for me. Don't become so familiar with the apostle upon your life. that uh, I can do it better than him. I preach better. I don't need the Father's blessing. You need the Father's blessing upon your business, upon your marriage, upon your church, upon your ministry. I pull you out of servanthood tonight into the sonship of the kingdom. Whew. Sons have rights. Sons have privileges. Businessmen, listen to me. If you are a businessman, go tomorrow and bless your people. You are, you are the authority of that place. Bless your people. Bless the contracts. If you are a man, bless your family. Come on, church. Whew. Now we're going to pray for you. Rebo my God, I feel the presence of God. Shukurababa. 
I'm preaching from revelation, man. I'm not preaching from a man-made thing. I'm preaching from a revelation that I live. I live this message. I live in this dimension. I don't become familiar with my apostle. I never see my apostle empty-handed. Never will I do that. Never have I done that. I don't go to his home without anything. I understand the power of placing upwards. Never see a man of God empty-handed. Don't become so familiar. I went with my offering. It cost me a lot, man. I said, Dad, I bless you. Bless me. Bless him. We have lost this, man. Is that Pastor? Is that Pastor Gideon? Is that Pastor JJ? Is that Pastor Lillian? Is that Pastor Nikki? Is that Pastor Peter? Is that Pastor Peter? Is that Pastor Gideon? That's why we're not getting the blessing of God. There's a king in the midst. There's an apostle. There's a father. And we have to hear this. My staff. You are the most vulnerable for this. Nicole. Because you live with me in an eight hour day. We work together. We do these things. And you can easily look at the man. Doing wrong things. Losing tempers. Whatever. And you can say... Whatever. You have to understand there's a man locked up, yes, in the apostle. But look beyond the man to say, that's my apostle. That's my father. Whatever he says, my dad, I'm going to do this. I'm going to submit to him. And I'm pulling out. Somebody asked me today, I think Quincy says, Dad, what can I pray for tonight's service? I said, pray for one thing. I want the hearts of the sons, like Malachi chapter 4 says, that the sons' hearts must come back to the Father and the Father's hearts to the sons unless I come and strike the earth with a curse. I don't want you to be under the curse. I don't want to be under the curse. My heart needs to be connected. Your heart needs to be connected. Tonight in this place, we release the anointing of the Father upon this house in the name of Jesus.